One day, when I was seven years old, I drew a picture of someone that I imagined was from the future. I folded it up, stuck it in an envelope, and posted it to Tharg at 2000 AD, a sci-fi comic my older brother loved. A few weeks later, I received a letter through the front door, quite an exciting thing back in the 1970s. I opened it, and it read, Greetings, Earthling. Thank you for your picture. Unfortunately, we cannot print it at this moment in time as it is programmed for many light years to come. We'll keep it secure in a memory vault until then. Splundig Verthrig Tharg. I later found out that meant farewell. I kept that letter close by for many years. It was significant. It seeded in me a story of belonging to this planet, Earth, to be an Earthling, to be part of a wider community of life, more than just human. It also seeded this idea of looking ahead to the future while living life today, having an eye on the future. In 2006, I fell down a climate change hole while researching a project. I've never really come back up. This is called the Great Acceleration. <clears throat> One side plots the exponential growth <clears throat> of human activities on this planet, socioeconomic activities, over the last couple of hundred years since the Industrial Revolution. And the other side, plots the impacts of those activities on our Earth's system. Think of the Earth system like the vital organs of our planet, complex systems which together regulate temperature and stable climatic conditions and maintain the overall health of our planet. Put simply, what you can see here is as we've accelerated the growth of extractive, productivity-driven, material and energy-intensive ways of organizing ourselves on this planet. In chilling symmetry, we've accelerated the warming, depletion, pollution, and destruction of our complex living Earth, which creates the conditions for all life, humans included. What this... Um, does is it reveals the hidden consequences of modern human activities. It shows us what happens through us. And for me, it also showed me that we're not just facing into a climate and ecological crisis, but we're facing into a story crisis. Because there's one story that has informed the shape and design of our globalized systems, our ways of organizing ourselves on this earth. It's a story you'll come across everywhere, in business, politics, media, education. It's only a few hundred years old. The story says, we humans are separate from all other life, from nature, the environment, the more than human world. We humans are separate from all other life, from nature, the environment, the more than human world. The story says nature's over there. It looks lovely. It's a bit dangerous, the wild stuff. It's other species, but not as evolved, intelligent, or important as humans. It's resources that we can extract, exploit, manipulate, and control. The story says it's normal for humans to do this and essential for prosperity and progress. The story has expanded over time to say we're not just separate from nature, we're also separate from each other. We're born as individuals to compete and get ahead, battling it out in a zero-sum game to be productive, because that's how we measure success. Maximizing and monetizing accumulating and consuming faster and faster, infinitely, forever. 
in this story, the very qualities that have been crucial for our success, our evolution as a species, like kindness, compassion, cooperation, community, responsibility, care, or wonder, creativity, are seen as soft, weak, inhibitors to success. And despite the endless headlines and relentless warnings from leading scientists, code red warnings of climate and ecological breakdown, mass species extinctions, we still continue to design, develop, organize, govern, educate, based on a story that we are separate from nature and separate from each other. What I've come to believe, with many others, is that this story of separation is not compatible with a healthy living planet, a planet able to support healthy human life. The story of separation is not compatible with life itself. Earth systems, the vital organs of our planet, which have taken millions of years to form, are beginning to unravel in just a few generations. When I think back to the seven-year-old me drawing the future, I couldn't have imagined that the very conditions that sustained life on this planet might be at risk in just 40 odd years. What makes this even more peculiar is if you ask someone to close their eyes and think about where you feel most happy, most at ease, most content, 90% of people will say in nature, a natural environment, a more than human context, that's where they feel most happy. I know because I've done this with hundreds of people over the last decade. I believe we're entering a lost phase in the human story. The story of separation no longer makes any sense. It shaped a globalized culture based on extraction, transaction, and distraction. It's dividing us, it's destroying life, and if we destroy nature, we destroy ourselves, ultimately. Because nature is our family. We are a part of nature, not apart from nature. What if we're being called to live by new stories? Stories based in a renewed understanding that all life is connected. Because the leading edges of science and biology are converging with ancient wisdom and what our indigenous brothers and sisters have always known. All life is interconnected, interdependent in relationship with everything else. And therefore, human health and the health of our planet are intimately entangled. You can't have one without the other. Here's one story that fascinates me. This is us, all of us. We live here on this life-giving rock called Earth, hurtling through space. Wow! The analogy of the Earth as a spaceship is well documented. Bucky Fuller said, we're all astronauts. Marshall McClellan said, we're all crew. This idea of crew fascinated me. It spoke of adventure, community, co-creation, participation, being in service to something bigger and mysterious. But when I dug into it, it seems that the current human mode on Spaceship Earth is in fact a passenger one. You see, passengers are distracted. We're not really sure of what's going on around us. We're very busy. We're definitely not looking ahead and we definitely haven't got a clue what's coming down the line. Passengers are quite entitled. We expect and demand a lot. Passengers are greedy. We want more and more and bigger and better. Passengers are messy. We create vast amounts of waste and expect others to deal with it. The passenger story is based on extraction, transaction, and distraction. The crew story is based on connection, 
cooperation and participation. And the real crew of Spaceship Earth right now are the more than human. That's right, remember the Earth systems. Nature is flying the spaceship. Right here we have three species, the whale, the krill, and the phytoplankton. Each stunningly unique, different, and diverse. But let's have a look at what happens through them. Some refer to this as the poop loop. The whale is doing awesome dives, singing incredible songs, generally living life large. And here come, oh, and as it does so, it starts feasting on the krill. It's the krill. And along come the phytoplankton. These are tiny micro plant-based algae with extraordinary scientific innovation capacities. And they start to nibble on the whale poop, right? The whale's like a great big ocean composter. And as they do so, they start to extract carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. Not just a little bit of oxygen. We're talking at least 50% of the oxygen we all breathe. Every second breath you take down to these creatures. And then here come the krill, who just krill around. Snacking, the krill snack, snacking on the uh, phytoplankton. And the whale eat the krill, and they take on board all that CO2, and when they die, they take that down onto the seabed. At a species level, we're talking millions of tons of carbon dioxide. This is a circular economy like no other. Radically diverse, beautifully weird individuals, each with their own unique gifts, living their own story, but in meaningful relationship, connection and cooperation with others around them, with others not like them, working together to collectively create the conditions that benefit everyone, all life, the whole, now and way into the future, truly in service to life. All powered by reciprocity, generosity. That's right, it's all a gift. No one gets paid any money. No one is told what to do. But everyone has what they need to flourish. Radical, spontaneous cooperation. Can you imagine if we applied this level of creativity, cooperation, and participation to reimagining our human systems and ways of organizing ourselves on this earth so that we bring life back, we bring love back, we bring health back to ourselves, to each other, to our communities, to nature, to the more than human world, to our earth systems, the vital organs of our one and only planet earth to which we all belong. Can you imagine being part of that story? There's three observations from our more than human family that I think are useful guides to help navigate these extraordinary times we're in. The first is love as a guiding principle, not in a romantic sense, but connection, attention, curiosity for other life, empathy, care, and critically in these times, courage for spontaneity and trust to confront our differences and our fears and vulnerabilities together. All more than human life appears to put the young at the center of everything. Listening to nurturing and protecting the young appears to be a foundational practice. Imagine if we put the voices of our young right at the center now, their visions and dreams, especially our indigenous and marginalized voices who suffered the most from the story of separation and who, from who we can learn so much. Cycles of life, everything exists in cycle and pattern. Seasons. Lunar phases, solar cycles, tides, ebbs and flows, nothing apart from the modern human attempts to move at warp speed, continuous eternal growth, and always on. Imagine if we slowed down, 
letting go of our fossil fuel speed addictions and began to tune in to the great rhythms of this earth, which has always guided and informed all life. And the most important cycle, birth, death, and renewal, things are born, they die, they become compost for the new. We need some things to die right now. Stories, behaviors, systems, industries. Imagine if we did that with compassion and respect, not judgment and blame. Imagine what could emerge from the compost. None of this requires any new technologies. It's within all of us. And it's 100% renewable. So the invitation I leave you with, especially those of us in the global north who've been flying business class on Spaceship Earth for too long, is to step into service and help bring life back wherever you live, becoming crew on Spaceship Earth where the only real questions you need to ask yourself are what happens through you and who or what will you become? Thank you.